I said, were you taking me to a prison? They said, it's not a prison, it was a prison. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now I wanna tell you a little bit about why I have been absent off the internet for about five days. And it all started when I left Melbourne. I've been following around the Dominion premiere in Australia. Uh, the last week was, it was very full on. We had a lot of activism on. We were overworking ourselves as usual. And it come time to leave, very exhausted when we left. And we were going to fly to the UK for around a week. And then after that week, we were going to leave the UK and go somewhere where the cost of living is cheap so we could work on all this footage and get it up for everyone to see. So 21 hours it took us to fly to London. Very long flight, very exhausted still. Get to London, go through customs, and they pulled me aside. They pulled me aside for questioning. When my name goes through that airport, in the last two times I've been flagged. Not sure, it's very strange that it, it seemed to happen right after all that media stuff happened there. Anyway, they pulled me aside. They asked me if I have a return ticket out. I said, no, I didn't have a return ticket out last time. So I can buy a return ticket out if you'd like me to, but we're going to somewhere in Asia so that we can get lots of work done. We just, we just basically come back to the UK so Laura can tend to some of the things she needs to, and then we take off. They kept me there for a long time. And then they took me to search my bags and then they kept me contained in a separate room after taking all of my property uh, so that I could be questioned. Then they come and question me. They asked me all about what I do, how much uh, I, do I earn, um, what I'm doing in the UK, how long I'm gonna stay, why I didn't have a return ticket out who my girlfriend is, all of these questions. I answered them all, truthfully. And I, they put me back in this holding sort of tank and I awaited for my, the answer. And about, oh, it seemed like it, three hours, four hours later, they come back and declined. They declined my access to the UK, which was a real kick in the guts and they didn't let me see Laura, so Laura didn't know what was going on. I contacted her, she was very upset. They didn't let us say goodbye to each other, separated us, and they kept me in this holding cell-like thing where I had to, I slept on the floor and they, had, they did have some vegan options there, some noodles and some rice. Kept me there till the next day in this holding tank with another five individuals who'd also been held for questioning and one thing I want to talk about is, I, I asked to speak to the Chief Immigration Officer. I said, well, who makes this decision? I want to speak to the Chief Immigration Officer. One of the reasons they didn't keep me in is because they were claiming that I was promoting myself in the UK and part of that promotion, I was, benef I was benefiting from it financially. Therefore, that could be akin to making money in the UK, which couldn't be more ridiculous. I earn US dollars from my Patreon account. <coughs> And they were saying that the school speeches and all the speeches that I do, um, I'm, benefiting, I'm benefiting from them financially, which is ridiculous. All my speeches are for free. And Patreons support me so that I can do more activism. And it's got nothing to do with the, the particular speeches that I do. It's my general work as a whole. I spoke to the chief immigration officer and I said, I'm not making money in the UK. What is this? You're using this as a reason not to let me in. He said it could be seen that you were promoting yourself in our country and as a result of that promotion, you are gaining Patreon support. Ridiculous. He also said they didn't know whether I was gonna leave the country. I said, each time I've been there, I've left the country. I've been there around five times in the last six months. I've left every single time. Doesn't my behavior in the past indicate that I'll leave in the future? Of course I'm gonna leave. I'm not gonna stay there. I travel as a part of my work. It stood. He didn't, they, they didn't let me buy a return ticket out. They just declined my access and they sent me all the way back to Australia. Now I said, why can't I just go to somewhere closer? Uh, maybe somewhere in Asia where Laura can meet me, which is what the plans were anyway and they declined that as well. They said, no, by law, we have to take you all the way back. So they flew me all the way back to Taiwan, 
which was 14 hours. Flew me all the way back to Australia, which was another nine hours uh, to Sydney. And then from Sydney, I didn't know what to do because I don't live in Sydney, I live in Adelaide. Um, very stressed. I've managed to get a one-way ticket to Adelaide. Now, all of this cost a lot of money. I didn't think I had to pay. I had to pay. I had to pay out of our own money, our own money, donations and everything like that. And it ended up costing a lot. So the flights to the UK and back to Australia and the flight to back to Adelaide cost a lot of money. I mean, we just cannot afford to be using money like in that way. And I was very exhausted. I mean, we were already exhausted from the Australia trip. Very exhausted. They kept me, oh, another thing I forgot to tell you guys. They kept me contained um, in an immigration prison, which I thought was just outrageous. So they kept me in this holding tank overnight, right? And then they they took me to an immigration prison. It was, I said, were you taking me to a prison? They said, it's not a prison. We arrived and there was, I've been to prison, I've been to a few prisons in my life. It was a prison, barbed, razor wire all around it, big gates that open, they search you through before you go in, make sure you're not bringing anything in. Uh, there's cells, there's all of these facilities that, that, that would be the same as a prison and there was all these poor guys who were just immigrants or you know, not accepted from the UK who were kept in this prison. And I was like, they're treating me like a prisoner. Like I, I found it quite sort of ironic in a way that, you know, when I was actually doing the wrong thing, I was imprisoned, probably rightfully so. But now I'm doing the right things, <laughs> trying to help animals, sober, haven't had a speeding fine. I haven't had as much as a speeding fine in five years, nothing, completely clean in f five years, still getting imprisoned. <laughs> this is like, one of the things the chief immigration officer actually said to me was like, these are official reasons, these are legal reasons we're not le letting you in, but off the record, we've done a background search on you um, and we don't really appreciate some of the things that you've said. And I was like, are you talking about the media articles that have been written about me, that they went through all of my stuff basically that I've ever said on Facebook for the last three years and took the most extreme things I've ever said, posted it up like that's what I stand by today. I said, I publicly retracted those statements, the really, really extreme things that I don't feel are good for advocacy. And it sort of gave me an idea that, hey, you know, they do have sort of this power that if, if it's not up to the, the, the individual on the day's discretion, like they could just say, oh no, we don't, I don't really appreciate this, this strong animal rights message you're promoting in the country. Maybe we can just decide not to let you in like that. That's kind of the vibe that I got from him because he did say off the record, we did a little background search on you. So that, that indicates to me that that would have influenced the decision. Now, I didn't have a return ticket out. The, the, Four weeks beforehand, before the Australia tour, I got into the UK without a return ticket. So how the hell was I supposed to know that I needed one this time? Anyways, that was the story. They kept me in this immigration um, prison. They treated me like a criminal. I was very, very upset the fact that I had to pay out of my own pocket for this. Um, and that they separated me and Laura. That, like, Laura's still in the UK now separate from me um, we've been together this you know every day since we basically got together and we do all our work together and you know Laura is very upset and it just feels very it's very harsh thing when you know we, we work so hard in Australia while we're here we're so exhausted we just wanted to go and sort of get this computer work done relax somewhere and just get it all out and it's just a big massive sort of sort of spanner in the works for us and she's all the way in the UK now and we're trying our best to get all, the, all, all of this resolved and at the same time I've got so much work to do as well because that is what's always have a sense of, sense of urgency like I've got to get work done, I've got to get this work done, I've got to get this work done.
but um, yeah, it's just a real shame and um, I guess it's, it's some things are out of my control. We've got some people trying to help us get this resolved, but I just thought I'd check in with you guys and let you know that everything's okay. We've got a lot of content on the way and we've just hit a little bit of a spanner in the works, a bit of a, a minor hiccup obstacle there. Um, but I've flown in the plane for about 44 hours. Um, uh, it's just really terrible. They were, they were sort of chaperoning me like I was Hannibal Lecter. There's always two people on me taking me to the plane. And like I've been in prison before and it just reminded me like when I was an inmate and it was just, I just thought it was ridiculous. But anyway, a lesson learned. I won't let that happen again. I'll make sure I always have return tickets out of places before I go there and, you know, cover my bases like that. But yeah, sorry guys that I've been missing in action. And I promise you that now that I'm settled and back, I'm going to put up the content, the amazing content that we've got. We got so much amazing content from Melbourne. It was an amazing experience. It was so good to connect again with the Australian activists. We've got a, a lot of work to do still, and I will do the animals justice. Just these things happen, don't they? I mean, these things happen, and you cannot predict um, what's gonna happen. It's just a shame that I'm separate from Laura at the moment, but we'll be reunited once again, and thank you so much for all your support. Sorry to the everyone who's supporting me on Patreon and things like that, that haven't been you know up and out there and haven't even been posting on instagram or facebook um but we'll get straight back into it uh, as soon as possible thank you all for your support and yeah lesson learned <laughs> all right i'll see you in the next video peace